Coming to you from the Windy City. Welcome to Let's Talk Shop, a podcast about all things cloud and enterprise tech. Listen to insights and guest interviews with IT thought leaders and professionals. Now, here's your host, Elias Kanaser. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Let's Talk Shop. We're going to maintain our tradition. We're back at reInvent 2025, and we're going to have some interesting conversations. It's you again. I just spoke to you last year. How are you doing, my God? Good, good. How are you, Alex? Always good, good to be with you. Always good to be with you as well. Uh, for my audience, real quick, please introduce yourself. My name is Pankaj Kumar. I'm executive partner and AWS practice leader for energy, telco, tech, and manufacturing at IBM Consulting. He covers a lot, and it's IBM Consulting, so we're going to get real-world, actual. One of my frustrations is what are enterprise doing? What is enterprise doing with AI, with agentic AI? Give me a little bit of what you're seeing out there from a practical perspective, aside from the announcements, aside from the features. If you can name customers, that's even better. How are customers using AI and agentic AI in particular? Absolutely. So what we saw initially when the whole you know, open AI came in and chat GPT came in, every enterprise was trying to discover in terms of what it means for them. Right. So that was the initial period of let's do POC, let's do you know, some chat bot and prove out the value. Do you think we're over that or are they still kind of? I, I think like 2026 will be year of how AI okay. versus what and why. Uh, I was recently at, a, at our executive summit and retreat where we had uh, HFS and some of the other analysts also came in, almost everyone agreed that what and why are kind of established. People understand that there's a value. But in terms of how we bring it to enterprise, it's really a different ballgame. Right, I agree. And that's where IBM plays, frankly, if you ask me. Because what, what we are realizing is the so-called boring work still need to be done. Sure. Architecture, modernization onto the cloud, data, governance, security, if you're not ready with all that, just keeping making one chatbot here and there and using some available LLMs won't solve the problem. What are you talking about? AI can do it. I can prompt it. Of course. No. <laughs> <laughs> of course you can. And, and I think that is where we, what we are seeing is people have to fundamentally reimagine workflows. If you go point by point by saying, okay, we can do point solution here, point solution there, that won't be successful. Mm. The side effect or the, the drawback or the barrier for people to do complete workflow is it needs scale, it needs executive commitment, it needs budget. These projects are not also simple. So I think those are some of the ins and outs we are seeing through enterprises. Uh, I still see people doing POCs, many are doing POCs, pilots, but a lot more are actually ready for rolling it out as an enterprise solution. Give me an example. Do you have a customer in mind? Yes. So. It is one of the largest gas utilities. Okay. It happens to be powering Vegas, frankly. Oh, so, oh. so we are in Vegas. So what they're doing is they're realizing that one of the major reasons for people to call is about high bill. Why my bill is so high, right? Instead of just automating the whole contact center only, they're looking at it three ways. What could be the customer problem? Maybe you've started using more. Then you'll have a high bill. Maybe you have a inefficient appliance that need change, things like that. So customer infrastructure, maybe there is an AMI problem, maybe the problem is towards the utility themselves, the meters are faulty, right? And third is weather. Maybe it's a very hot day, or maybe it's a very cold day, and using more gas to heat up, or you know, it's a very hot day, you're using electricity to fire up your AC. Things of that nature. So when you go and look at the data for all these sources, you need to fundamentally reimagine the workflow rather than saying we will just automate the contact center, right? That is where you see then results. The problem getting solved from 10, from hours to seconds, uh, you see a real impact. And less frustrated customer means higher customer satisfaction means you have better case for making cases for rate case and what. So how exactly are they doing it? So you're designing from the top bottom, you're building from the bottom up, but how are they doing it? Like, are they using their existing data centers? Are they using AWS? Are they using IBM? Are they using all of the, how are they doing it? So what they did was, they have a very visionary CIO. What they did first was, they, when, when this whole Gen AI chat, you know, the revolution came in like two, three years back, they realized that they were not ready. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to be ready. So first step they're doing is migrating from data centers onto AWS. So it's called DC exit. Okay, so cloud AWS. infrastructure replacing existing data centers. To, to AWS. Okay. They started with one of the most complex workloads. 
which is SAP. They mm -hmm. went to SAP RISE. And now they have engaged us and AWS to migrate all other applications. So they were successful. They did one thing at a time, did the most critical one, went live, everything, 35% improvement in performance and whatnot, and now they're doing other apps. That's awesome. So far, that's cloud migration yes, cloud and cloud migration. storage strategy. How are they bolting on top of that? Correct. AI, agentic AI in particular. Yes. So uh, if you come to your session tomorrow, and I'll, I'll I will. <laughs> but but I think the way they're doing is they have now figured out what are the data sources they need to now be able to pool data from. Um, there are language, large language model they are using, uh, but also bringing in this impact of uh, you know how does the connectivity works and is it secure enough, right? So if you look at the architecture, and I'll go through it, this session is not meant for that, but sure. you, you, they're getting the uh, inquiries from their end customers, then looking at um, you know, their uh, environment in, in, in AWS, which is a lot more agile in terms of being able to connect, and then um, looking at the data sources and their set of tools they're using, including AWS Bedrock uh, for a large language model, but also LangGraph, LangChain for other purposes, so that's how their uh, first step functions and whatnot. So. Okay, specifically with this customer, and I know you got to go and we're a little short on time, but last question about this customer. There's a lot of talk today in terms of AI is replacing jobs, people are getting fired left and right. With this particular customer, did they lose people? Did they fire people? Did they reskill people? What happened when Agentic AI became uh, the centerpiece of what they're trying to do? Yeah, so th there is an, uh, a large element of reskilling, and uh, we call workforce enablement. Uh, it is part of our engagement with the client, where we're doing workforce enablement for them to make sure the um, people are reskilled. Another thing is, you should remember, some of these contact center jobs are hard to fill. It's very frustrating jobs. So it's not about you're cutting people, it's just about the gap. Frankly, you don't have people to really fill that gap. So you're really kind of addressing a gap where resources were not even there, but customers are suffering. Right? So it'd be fair to say it's actually expanding the, expanding workforce, the workforce and yeah. reskilling the workforce as opposed to maybe you know, reducing the workforce. Would that be fair? It'd and be it, fair, yeah. Are you seeing that in the, in, in the market in general, in the industry in general, or specific to this customer? So across clients, what I'm seeing is they, there's a big focus on reskilling. Uh, not everybody can be reskilled. Of course, so, no, that's So sometimes people need to have hard decisions and uh, candid conversations are helpful. Uh, IBM did this candid conversation within our own organization, and you can see our CEO uh, previous uh, blogs and stuff like that in terms of the dollar savings they committed, and they delivered. And they are communicating, like across our customers, we are seeing they are also communicating to their people that the work need to be done more efficiently because now we have resources which, which were not there earlier, right? So in terms of productivity, time to market, all of these have very large impact with. Uh, the adoption of agentic AI and AI, right? So to that extent, I will say um, many people will get reskilled. Uh, some of them may find it difficult. Uh, and, and I respect that very much. In my in my years as an analyst, I used to say companies should publish a roadmap of what skills they're interested in. Yeah. But not everybody made it when we moved from PBX to IP. Not everybody made it from Novell to Windows, yeah. uh, from Notes to Exchange. I mean, it's just the the nature of of things. Uh, most will probably be able to res be reskilled. Some will have to find something else. It is what it is. But I'm, I, I respect that you were honest with that answer and, and with what you're seeing. I know you've got a big week. Um, I really thank you for making time to share. I'm going to attend the session tomorrow. I'm going to leave links to it as well yeah. uh, for those that are interested. It's our actual real-world use case, not just of cloud migration, but also of how agentic AI is being used in the enterprise. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. All right.